Okay, now let's talk about the lateral geniculate nucleus. This is the part of the thalamus that gets input directly from the retina. So just to review, the axons that come out of the retina uh, are the retinal ganglion cell axons. They form the optic nerve and then they uh, hit the optic chiasm. If they're from the temporal side, they stay on that side of the brain. If they're from the nasal retina, they cross to the opposite side. But regardless, they project to this little tiny region called the lateral geniculate nucleus, which is part of the thalamus. This is just another view. Here's the thalamus here, deep inside the brain. Remember, the thalamus is part of the diencephalon. And so uh, this region is just a, a nucleus within uh, the thalamus. It's called the lateral geniculate, geniculate nucleus because uh, lateral remember means away from the midline so it's in the lateral part of the thalamus this would be the medial thalamus so this is the lateral thalamus it's called the geniculate nucleus because it comes from the latin word genu which means uh, knee and uh, in fact if you're uh, if, you've heard the, if you have ever heard the term genuflect that means to kneel or to get down on one knee then that's where that word comes from. Um, so it, I guess whoever uh, named it decided it looked like someone's knee, and that's just why we call it that. Um, if you look at a cross section of it, which is what you can see here, this is a zoomed in uh, picture, there are six different layers of cells. So this is uh, a picture of a, of a LGN that has been probably nissel stained so these purple uh, cells are mostly neurons and you can see six distinct layers the the uh, most ventral layer is layer one and then it goes uh, two three four five six and it turns out that these layers are important because the way the axons from the retina connect to the lgn depend on the different layers so first of all the inputs are segregated by eye that means that axons that come from uh, different eyes go to different layers. Remember that each eye projects axons to both sides of the brain. So if you're talking about, for example, the right eye, this would be the right eye over here. So you have the right nasal retina and the right temporal retina. Uh, the axons from the right temporal retina go to the right LGN and the axons from the right nasal retina go to the left LGN and vice versa for the left eye. Left nasal retina goes to the right LGN. Left temporal retina goes to the left LGN. But when those axons get to the LGN, they project to different layers. So if we're just looking at the right lateral geniculate nucleus, the, uh, the layers that get input from the right eye, in other words, the ipsilateral layers, are layer two, three, and five. Uh, whereas the layers that get input from the contralateral eye, which would be the left nasal retina in this case, it's layers one, four, and six. So, and that's true on the opposite side as well. The contra, for, for the left LGN, the contralateral eye would be the right eye, and the right eye sends axons to layers one, four, and six. The ipsilateral eye for the left LGN is the left retina, and the left retina. Uh, left <clears throat> temporal axons project to layers two, three, and five. So this is the general rule over here. Axons from the contralateral eye project to layers one, four, and six of the LGN. Uh, axons from the ipsilateral eye project to layers two, three, and five. And this is just another way of uh, describing that. So again, contralateral uh, eye projects to layer six, layer four, and layer one. Ipsilateral eye projects to layer two, layer three, and layer five. And there's another degree of segregation, which is based on the retinal ganglion cell type. So if you remember, when we talked about the retina, uh, there were two different types of retinal ganglion cells, the P types and the M types. If you remember, the M types are larger and have much larger dendritic fields. The P types are smaller, also, they are much more slowly adapting, so they're involved in detecting shape and fine detail, whereas M-type retinal ganglion cells are more important for detecting movement. <clears throat> it turns out that those two different types of cells 
project to different layers of the LGN. So the P-type retinal ganglion cells only project to what are called the parvocellular layers of the LGN. In fact, that's what P-type means. Um, they project to the parvocellular layers of the LGN, whereas the M-type axons project to the magnocellular layers of the LGN. So the magnocellular layers are layers 1 and 2, and the parvocellular layers of LGN are 3, 4, 5, and 6. The, the words parvo and magno, by the way, mean small and big. So magnocellular just means big cells or big neurons. Parvocellular means small cells. And they're called that because that's what they look like. So if we go back here, these are, again, the layers of the LGN. And you can kind of see just by looking at them that the cells in layers 1 and 2 are bigger and darker than the cells in three, four, layers 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it's purely due to the, the difference in size that they get those names. And, uh, but there is this segregation of the different types of retinal ganglion cells. So you kind of have two different uh, pathways, uh, one of which is uh, segregated by eye, one of which is segregated by type of retinal ganglion cell. So each layer gets input from, it, from its own combination of, uh, of one of the two eyes and either parvocellular or magnocellular, uh, I mean M-type or P-type uh, inputs. So again, just to be clear, M-type, P-type refers to different types of retinal ganglion cell, magnocellular, parvocellular, refers to different layers of the LGN, but they uh, are connected. So M-type retinal ganglion cells project to the magnocellular LGN layers. P-type retinal ganglion cells project to the parvocellular uh, LGN layers. And just to make things more interesting, there's actually a, a third type of retinal ganglion cell um, that is uh, smaller and less uh, numerous than the other two. They're uh, creatively referred to as non-M, non-P retinal ganglion cells. So I guess after they named the P-type and the M-type, they got tired of naming things, so they just called this group the non-M, non-P retinal ganglion cells. And those cells, uh, their axons also go to the LGN, um, but they project to what we call the coniocellular layers. And the coniocellular layers are basically just the layers that are in between the numbered layers. So uh, actually, if you look at this picture, you can kind of see them more easily. So the numbered layers have the uh, both parvo and magnocellular neurons um, are visible, but those layers in between, the ones that are kind of colored pink here, are the coniocellular layers. So they get their input again from the non-M, non-P retinal ganglion cells. And next up, we will talk about the visual cortex.